Hello and good morning, folks. This is Almas Market Mornings with Shikhar Garg, your fresh brew of uh, global financial updates with Jairam Krishnamurthy. It's the period where the regularly released macroeconomic data is influencing quite a lot of market activity, folks. Uh, Aussie dollar slid after the upward in employment, uh, employment numbers for the second straight month, while the Japan had their record-breaking trade deficit for the month. Uh, a slowing export uh, to China and double-digit growth in imports led to a 3.5 trillion yen deficit for Japan. It's a record highest in so many years. And what was interesting is the fact that it was expected even higher. While these nations reported concerning numbers, US, on the other hand, is moving on a different track altogether. The economy keeps charging ahead with a strong uh, retail sales number and manufacturing number. So uh, would this further strengthen uh, the rate hike scenario, JK? I mean, what's going on? What's your take? Good morning. Uh, yes, uh, when I look through the various data, keep uh, key data points from the US in the last uh, couple of weeks, I wonder if, uh, after all, they're able to achieve a soft landing for the economy. Uh, if someone is wondering what a soft landing is, uh, so, you know, it's a business cycle in the process of an economy shifting from growth to slow growth to potentially flat as it approaches but avoids a recession. Uh, it's usually caused by government attempts to slow down inflation. So really, we had more evidence this week. Uh, moderation in year-on-year -year inflation was has been followed by a strong retail sales and housing market data yesterday. And, you know, uh, retail sales were up 3% month-on-month in January, uh, handily beating the expectations of 1.9% gain. Even the core retail sales report beat expectations, showing 2.3% gain versus 0.9% high. So notably, the rise was broad-based, with no individual category seeing a decline in January. Uh, consumers probably have opened their wallets liberally after a 1.1% decline in December retail sales. Uh, this uh, Then we had the National Association of Home Builders on Wednesday saying that the index rose uh, to 7 points to 42 notching the largest monthly gain in nearly a decade outside of the range bound from the spring 2020 COVID-19 lockdowns. Industrial production uh, come, uh, you know, came flat, previous uh, being minus 1%. New York Empire State Manufacturing Index came at minus 5.8 versus 32.9 minus last month and minus 18 expected. And looking at uh, the recent data, you know, uh, the previously omnipresent calls for a 2023 recession in US are now looking more and more wrong by the day. So several significant data releases as well as Fed speakers are lined up today as well with PPA inflation, Philly Fed manufacturing survey, the January residential construction and the weekly jobless claims. Uh, for once, markets took good news as good news with stocks notching up modest gains across and carrying it over to the Asian station as well. Looking Look at this. Uh, Nasdaq has held on to more than 15% gain since the beginning of the year. S&P over 9%. And Dow Jones nearly 5% gain. Investors' actions do not indicate a major concern of uh, recession. Yields gained modestly, mostly in the long end. In the process, uh, yield curve between 2 and 10 has flattened by 10 basis points from 91.70 to 82.70. Uh, money markets have fully priced in a 25 basis points hike in March and almost certain of one more hike in May. And the chances of 25 basis points hike in June meeting have also increased from, uh, you know, increased to 46% from 6.2% um, a month ago. So all in all, uh, very uh, bullish environment for the dollar, uh, which has continued its recovery post the CPI report taking heart from more evidence of economy doing well. Added to that, we had inflation from UK coming down, raising debates about the next move by BOE between a small hike versus a pause, while Eurozone industrial production came worse, with a fall of 1.1% versus 1.4% rise last month. Year on year was minus 1.7% versus 2.8% plus last month. Both were worse than expected as well. These were reasons enough to trigger more short covering in the dollar, with Japanese trade and missionary orders data today and the Australian jobs data today morning, as you mentioned, all coming softer than expected. Uh, that said, the dollar index is still finding good resistance above 104. Uh, but I do believe a move up to 106 is on the cards technically, 
which will be just a 38.2% retracement of the big fall from 114.78 seen since September last. Perhaps we need to hear some good progress on debt talks to see further recovery in the dollar, as that still remains as a hanging sword on the stability of the market. And Indian merchant trade uh, balance hit the one-year low, uh, rather the deficit hit one-year low in January, and that was a pleasant surprise. Trade deficit should at uh, USD 17.75 billion from 23.8 billion in December. Market was expecting the deficit to be around 24.4 billion. Exports dropped by 5%, but, but imports dropped by a bigger 13% contributing to the drop in overall deficits. Moderation in imports has been seen across oil, gold, and core imports as well. The drop in imports uh, probably reflects lower domestic demand, but that needs uh, more confirmation. Just for a perspective, the trade deficit for April, January uh, of uh, FY23 widened to 232.95 billion from 153.78 billion. So we just have to see whether this was a blip. And in case this moderation continues, then it can be a game changer for the rupee uh, for at least for some time, because uh, all through the year, rupee has been weakening based on the higher uh, deficits. Uh, rupee, rupee, of course, limited uh, showed only limited reaction to the data and in, in, I mean, we need to see more evidence of uh, the deficits moderating. Uh, perhaps uh, combined with some flows as we are trading near about 83 could help uh, uh, at least a minimum retracement to 80 to 1020. Thank you. Okay, JK, that was quite interesting. And yes, folks, uh, as JK mentioned, the moderation in the inflation for US is uh, still there, but the uh, Moderation in inflation for Eurozone is uh, surprisingly on a different tune altogether because we have, what we have seen is the uh, inflation expectation for German uh, zone or the Eurozone and the German region have been rising as the inflation spreads for Germany keeps rising. Now, that's that's quite, a, uh, you know, a mixed bag kind of uh, activity from the global economy. But as we uh, heard, the omnipresent recession expectations doesn't really look to be panning out. And uh, what's better uh, news than this? Because uh, India is always on the uh, look for, you know, global flows to coming in. And with flows, uh, how about uh, the good uh, trade deficit number? I mean, India's trade deficit number hits one year low at 17.75 billion, while the expectations were of 24 billion. Though the major moderation in, uh, in this uh, low trade deficit number was from the imports, but uh, it can be a game changer for the Indian economy and the Indian rupee as well. And uh, talking about trade deficit, how can we miss out on the uh, rupee invoicing or the rupee settlement framework that uh, the government and the uh, central bank are pushing for? There's almost 20 banks who have opened the washroom accounts to settle uh, foreign trade in rupees. Uh, although the uh, process is yet to offtake but uh, the banks are all set to participate in it enthusiastically so uh, let's see how things go about that's it for today folks we shall come back again tomorrow with another round of updates thank you so much for listening